I'm Xin. I'm the lead machine learning engineer from ELISA, and I'm also the tour guide today to take you on a journey of a machine learning model from experiment to production. So welcome on board. First, a quick journey of myself in ML. On the left, it is a picture of me on a typical pre-COVID day at work, enthusiastically putting machine learning model into production and teaching my machine to learn. On the right, it is a picture of me on a post-COVID day at work from home, doing pretty much the same thing. I started my ML journey as a product engineer graduate in a mining technology company, developing machine learning models to classify operation types of heavy mining machines. Then I moved into the startup world as a software engineer, developing image search engine and speech analytics engine using computer vision and natural language processing techniques that I pick up along the way. Now I spend most of my time thinking how to operationalize machine learning solutions at scale. Having been enjoying software engineering for some time now, I would like to think that the development of machine learning solutions is like an ex extension of the development of software application. Putting machine learning models into production, so-called ML ops, is like putting software application into production, which we know as DevOps. So from DevOps to ML ops, what is ML ops exactly? This is a definition from Wikipedia. MLOps is a set of practices that aims to deploy and maintain machine learning models in production reliably and efficiently. The word, it is compound of machine learning and the continuous development practice of DevOps in the software field. So why MLOps instead of just pure DevOps? Machine learning systems consist of not only code, but also data and models. Machine learning applications include not only deterministic components such as code, but also non-deterministic components such as model experiment. And machine learning pr projects are conducted by hybrid teams, including not just engineers, but also data scientists. Due to all these characteristics of machine learning practice, and unique life cycle management it is required from data, model, and code to governance, orchestration, deployment, and monitoring. And machine learning system also requires a unique workflow from experiment to deployment. And unique development process is also needed to facilitate hybrid teams. Therefore, MLOps is born. Today, I'm going to use a natural language processing 101 model, sentiment classification on IMDB movie review data to illustrate the path a typical machine learning model travels through in the MLOps system. The journey includes several stops. They are experiment, test, release, deployment, and monitor. Experiment is our first stop. Think about when you do software development, you have the function logic in mind and want to test that logic. So you write some code, run it locally, and test it, see whether it works. If it does, commit it to the source control repository. Similarly, during model development, we need to train a model with different um, feature data as well as model configurations on top of the function code. Once the model is trained, we would like to test, test it and see how it performs when making predictions. This process it is iterative and it is called experiment. We would also like to track all the experiments that we run during the model development process. In order to track them, there is a component called experiment tracking in the MLOps system. To provide a platform for us to capture all the relevant information and metadata in all the experiments that we run during model development. 
here is a code snippet to show how we track experiments during model development. A Python decorator can be used as part of the experiment tracking framework to define an abstract d-tagging scheme. For example, the experiment job type, experiment run type. And during model training, the model training configurations are locked to the experiment tracking platform. And also the model training metrics are also locked to the platform via callback, fun callback functions. And after the model is trained, we have a trained model and its artifacts. They are also registered to the experiment um, tracking platform. There are lots of experiment tracking um, platform as the managed services out in the market. And the one that I used in this example, it is weight and biases. And here's what it looks like on the platform. We have the experiment tags, we have trained as the drop types, we have all the training configurations for the trained model, and we also have the training metrics generated from the model via callback function. A typical experiment workflow consists of three main steps, data preprocessing, model training, and model evaluation. And here shows how the um, tagging and the metadata logging schemes work. At each step, we would like to log um, relevant information and track them onto the experiment tracking platform. For data preprocessing, we typically log the um, input data set or it is reference, the split output training data set or its reference, the evaluation data set or its reference, and also we would like to lock the feature schema of the data set as the artifact. During model training, we typically lock the training configurations, the training data or its reference, the training metrics, as well as the model output or its reference. If we have a trained model and its artifact, we will also register them as the artifact from the model training step. For model evaluation, we typically lock the model um, evaluation configurations, evaluation data or its reference, and the evaluation metrics. Sometimes we also have artifacts from the evaluation process, such as the confusion mat matrix or a histogram plot, and we lock them as artifacts for the evaluation step. This is what it looks like after the model experiment and development. With all information captured in one tracking platform, we can better keep track of what experiments we have run. We can easily identify which experiments produce the best model. And we can also easily reproduce all the experiments that we have run in the future with great traceability and reproducibility. After we have discovered the right approach um, with the correct model architecture, architecture and with the right model configuration for to solve a specific problem, the model will travel through to the next stop to be tested. This is the model evaluation component in the MLOps system. When doing software development, we have a unit test to make sure that our code behaves as expected. Similarly, during model development, uh, we also have a model eva evaluation to assess, assess the model to make sure that the, its performance of the prediction behaves as expected. The model eva evaluation component has been considered in the um, experiment workflow, and the model evaluation metrics are also recorded to the experiment tracking platform. The evaluation metrics are typically compared against a predefined measure of success, for example, and model accuracy threshold to make sure that the um, model um, ev evaluation passes the, the test or otherwise it would fail. And here's what it looks like after the model evaluation being tracked. We have the um, evaluation as the job type. We locked all the evaluation configuration as well as the metric. 
once we have the model developed and quality assured, it reaches the release stage. During software development, we have a release or a continuous integration pipeline. The pipeline typically includes the build and test steps. For a model release pipeline, it usually includes build, test, and train steps. Even though there's a trained model from the experiment workflow, it is always a good practice to trigger the training pipeline again to make sure that the model to be deployed to production is trained on up-to-date data with the latest code and configuration committed to the source controlled repo. A typical model release or continue, a continuous integration pipeline includes the build step to package the code and build the training pipeline component, test step to test the code, and a train step to trigger the training pipeline. The execution of the training pipeline is actually run on a orchestrated pipeline platform which is another component in the MLOps system separated from where the CI pipeline is run. The steps in the training pipeline are those occurred in the experiment workflow, but those steps are run during the release stage as part of the training pipeline instead of the um, experiment workflow to make sure that the trained model generated from the pipeline is up to date for deployment. And this is the model release system diagram. We start from the top right corner, the CI pipeline. Um, I used GitLab as GitLab runner as my CI pipeline for this example. It goes through the build, test, train steps and trigger the training pipeline to run on a orchestrated uh, pipeline orchestration platform. I use Airflow as the, orchestr uh, the pipeline orchestrator running on the cloud compute resource. And the steps in the training pipeline are the same as the um, experiment workflow. And similarly, we would like to track the information and metadata generated from each um, step at the execution of the pipeline. And here, um, the information are also locked to the same experiment tracking platform as that is used in the experiment workflow. And here shows the similar information tracked from the uh, training pipeline execution to the platform. There's few things that I would like to mention is that the tagging scheme is different for the training pipeline compared to that of the experiment tracking. Here we use the release pipeline tags. The information locked to the tracking platform from each step are combined as one um, pipeline run instead of separate experiment runs. Model artifact and a trained model generated from the pipeline are locked to the experiment tracking platform, which will be the artifacts to be deployed to production. The model evaluation metrics are locked to the uh, tracking platform as well, which will be um, the metrics evaluated against for deployment. is what it looks like on the experiment tracking platform after the release stage. We have the pipeline tags and all the information from different steps in the pipeline log into one run and the evaluation metrics also registered in the tracking platform. And also the model um, artifacts and the trained model are also registered onto the experiment tracking platform with proper versions and tags. After the release stage, the model is tagged for deployment. During um, software development, the deployment or the continuous delivery pipeline typically includes review and deploy steps. For model deployment pipelines, it includes eva evaluate, build and test on model components and deploy steps. And here it is the model deployment workflow. The CD pipeline has a evaluate, build, 
and the um, deployment step. At the model ev evaluation step, the process is either manual or automated, automated to check whether the model evaluation metrics meet the predefined criteria. If it does, it will tag the relevant model on the experiment tracking platform for deployment. At the step of building and testing the model component, it will retrieve the relevant model tagged for deployment from the experiment tracking platform and package it with the function code into a deployable component before deploying it to the target environment, whether it is staging or port. And this is the deployment system diagram starting from the CD pipeline on the right. It goes, to, it goes through the evaluate step to check whether the model evaluation passes or fails. If it passes, then it will tag the um, model to be released and deployed on the experiment tracking platform. If it fails, the CD pipeline would exit. The build test steps will retrieve the model artifact tag for deployment from the experiment tracking platform, package it with the function code into a deployable component, and add the deploy steps to deploy the component into target environment for model inference. The journey of a machine learning model doesn't just stop at deployment. Once the model it is released into production, a monitoring component is crucial in the ML ops system to ensure that the model in production behaves as expected. After a software application release into production, there is logging and monitoring in place to catch all the unexpected behaviors of the software. Similarly, model monitoring it is required in production to capture all the unexpected um, elements in both the incoming data for model prediction as well as the performance of the model prediction itself. In the monitoring component, there are certain information or metadata that we like to keep track of and also um, lock them to the same experiment tracking platform as that is used in other components in the ML ops system. The information includes the input data distribution to track whether there's um, data drift, the prediction distribution, as well as the model performance evaluation to make sure that the model produced the prediction as accurately as expected in production. It is noticed that the um, tagging scheme for model monitoring is different. We use more monitoring tags here um, as opposed to the other tagging schemes in the other components in the ML ops system. And here's what it looks like on the tracking platform. We have the production tags for monitoring, monitor as the job type, and all the information of the um, data and model prediction at inference time locked to the platform. As you can see, we ha I have the input data um, here, um, and it which is the average length of the, um, te the te text for the movie review and the prediction accuracy, as well as the um, prediction probabilities or the confidence score of each um, model inference. To put all the steps that a model, the ML model travels through together, this is the ML of system diagram of the model journey. We start from the left here where experiments and development happen. We track all the experiments at each step and lock them to the experiment tracking platform. Then the model went through the CD, CI pipeline for um, release. And the CI pipeline also triggered the um, orchestrated training pipeline to generate the model artifact and register them to the experiment tracking platform. Then it went through the CD pipeline to retrieve the artifacts from the platform, packaged it with the function code into a deployable component, and then deploy it to production. Last but not least, the its operation was also monitored in production with the monitoring component. 
on the occasion of a noticeable performance degradation in production, the monitoring component will tr either trigger a um, orchestrated tr training pipeline to retrain the model with more recent and up-to-date data, and then the model will go through the release and deployment stages again. On the occasion that the model needs further um, development and improvement, it will go back to the experiment and development stage and to improve the model before it can go through the whole journey again to be deployed into production. This is the overview of the journey of a machine learning model from experiment to production. There are a few takeaways that I would like to mention here. A machine learning system consists of experiment tracking, pipeline orchestration for model de development, automated pipelines for model deployment, and model monitoring in production. The journey of a machine learning model from experiment to production is the essence of MLOps. MLOps is a set of practices includes the establishment of technical component as well as the process and workflow of the machine learning practice life cycle. The complete journey of a machine learning model, it is not only the result of a technical system, but also a cultivated culture in machine learning practice. And thank you so much for your time.